Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Trading Open, our live room event. Welcome to our new members, as well as all of our returning regulars here on Thursday, November 9th, 2017. Great to see everybody here. Markets are down today, so we want to look to play the short side primarily on continuations and also long side in the inverse ETFs that go up when the stock market sells down. As always, all information is for educational use only. You're not making advice about what to buy, sell, or hold by watching the screen, not to make actual trades. It's all for learning the patterns in real time so we can see how this all works. We're going to get started right out of the gate with a trip TR. Well, actually, first thing we'll do is look at the broad market. The S&P is at a two-day low, and we do have a reasonably strong Actually, a very strong sell-off in the QMI. It's got it's about 12 points, so it's a strong sell bias market today. I always like to let you know if it's a strong or weak, long or short market, or a choppy market, we've got a strong short bias. So it's trying to find some support here with sequential bottoms and the bounces. So we'll see if that gets a little lift, or if it collapses on down. Overall, though, it's a red flag day or a bearish day for the stock market. So we'll see which of these charts runs the most. We'll go top down through our alerts list. First up to bat, we've got TripAdvisor, T-R-I-P. I need to push that down. These moved since I was first looking at them a half an hour ago. So look at a 31.7 for long, 30.7 for the short. It's actually because it's here, it's going to become a inside chart because it's currently inside the prior day's range. So we'll move it down there. Our first breakout chart of the day is, or I should say breakdown chart, is Weight Watchers. Going on a diet yesterday, Weight Watchers plummeted from 51 to 45 for a six point run down. So, best play in this chart would be a short down here. We'll see if it continues on down 4420. The short trigger currently, I may tighten that up a bit. I want to see what it does right on the open. Or if it bounces, we got a long trigger 4580 here, right above the 50 cent mark. Our gappers today, we've got KSS, and I believe that's Coles. You can see it's gapped down from 40.6 all the way down to 37. So that's a three-point gap. It's starting to fill the gap a little bit here today. So we'll see if it's able to continue its upward trajectory or if it continues to drop on down to new lows. 36.50 is a short trigger down here. Long trigger. We're going to have to push that up a bit. I put these together over half an hour ago. They moved a bit since then. Aroku's doing a bearish cup after a really nice gap. This is probably the best of the gap charts so far, either on a gap fill retracement down in this region for the short, under 23.80 for the short, or if it takes out new highs up over 25.60 for the long. But you can see how big this gap is, right? But study these types of gaps. This type of gap is a tradable gap. Now, there's no guarantee it's going to move anywhere today. Maybe it just goes sideways. We don't know. But it's got, you know, the better trade potential compared to, say, KSS. KSS is actually pretty good, too. Roku is a bit better because it's got more points of range, and it's beyond 10%, so it may do a gap fill instead of a gap continuation. Remember, gappers, we like to see them up to or maximum 10% to give it a strong likelihood of continuation in the gap trend. Uh, for a $19 stock, that's a buck 90, which rounds up to around 21. So if it had gapped in this region up to 21, if it had gapped up and made, say, that, that pattern this morning, it'd be much more likely a candidate for a continuation move later. The fact that it's, you know, 25% gap up here, 30% gap up, means that it may well fill the gap, and the target would be 22 or so. So we'll see which way it goes, either 
gap fill or gap continuation when we play it either way may find support here at this 24 hole number and pivot and if it does i'll tighten up a pivot long but either way we are ready it's important for you as a trader to understand the likelihood of continuation of the different gaps and also the specific nuances of which gaps are intelligent and make better trading uh, opportunities than choppy gaps or cheap stock gaps that only gap a nickel on thin volume or stuff that's not tradable. You want things that are reasonably strong. Next up to bat, looks like Coles is continuing to fill the gap here. We're next up to bat is Macy's. Ran all the way up to 18 and a quarter before pulling back. I don't like this chart nearly as much as the other two gaps because they don't know what they want to do. It's kind of up and down. So, but it is volatile at least, and the volume is really good. It's got as much as 50,000 shares a minute pre-market, which is really strong. So. I like the volatility. I don't like the lack of direction. So this would be more for experienced traders to take a shot at to see if it's able to run. Right now I've got an 18.4 long. I may tighten that down a bit here on the open. I want to see what it does between now and the opening bell. Next up, a nice gap up in UVXY. Uh, it gaps up when the stock market drops, and it's got really good range, 14.7 to 16.30. See, VXX, it costs twice as much, but only gives you the same point range. So it's got half the implied volatility. So it's not as good as the UVXY, though they're both fine, but UVXY is better because it gives you the same point range at half the price. So you're doubling the volatility because this is a multiple. So anyway, UVXY looks hot. We want to go long if it continues on up in today's markets. That's the best directional market play to take. If the stock market continues its downward uh, trajectory, and again, this is the S&P down in the gutter down here. It got knocked off its, its perch, and it's down under the previous day's low. So that's a bearish market setup, and it's more likely to attract more sellers than to attract, you know, bottom feeding, bounce buyers kind of thing. So it's more likely to keep dropping down here today. So if it does so, UVXY is likely to continue on up here. So we are ready for it. And our inside charts, and again, don't take these unless you've been here at the room at least a year or two and got at least, you know, five or seven years experience. You can see it's got a nice previous day's range, right? Valley and Farmer from 14 up to 15, just under 15.30. So for a $15 stock, it's got over a point range, which is pretty good because of how clean the breakout trends were. Not a lot of volatility, but we'll see. Prefer if it takes out new highs over 15 dime up here for a continuation. It goes short, we'll hit at 1450 right here. This is one with relatively wide, dangerous spread, so absolutely only for experienced traders. PRX, what's good about it is the volatility going 2850 up to 33. So it's got four and a half points of range, which is good. We'll see if it takes on new highs up here with 3120 or if it drops short under the 2940. We'll see where it goes today. Last but not least, TripAdvisor. That's the one we'd covered earlier that did a late day breakout that then reverted to the a mean reversion play. It ran up, it came back to half. So they used to call my one, two, three pattern or an ABC wave. It ran up, pulled back down to a mean reversion. It may well do a pivot, but if it doesn't, we're covered on the breakdown too. So either way it runs, we're ready for it with a long trigger 31.7 up here. And I'll likely tighten that down and a short trigger 30.7 right here. So those are our charts, and we'll see which way they go. The two best gaps up are Roku and UVXY, right? Those are 
you pay nothing, attention to nothing else today, those would be the two best charts because they're the strongest gappers, pre-market at least, and we got just a few minutes till today's opening bell. And again, a sincere thanks to all of you for your loyalty and being here, especially those who've been with me for years. And a welcome aboard to those of you who are new as well. It's always good to see new traders here. I work very hard at this room, as you can tell. More in-depth, detailed, professional day trading content than anyone else that runs a live room. I go very in-depth and detailed into explaining the reasons why the entries and exits are set. and give you a kind of day trading seminar online each session here. So much higher content value than other places that just sit there and, you know, stupidly, quietly look at charts and don't do not do anything except occasional text or occasional voice post. I like to give a very professional day trading seminar approach online. So that and the win rate of my alerts are the two things that set me apart from anyone else out there that's run a room. <sighs> been quite the long journey. Hey, also, it'll help you if you start figuring out, keep a spreadsheet that shows profit potential and winning trades. So if the win is size, you know, whatever size X, what's the the amount that you get up to for the number of different shares you might trade? Maybe it's 500 shares or 1,000 shares, or if you're just trading two or 300 shares, whatever, figure out what the math should look like and start making a relatively quick and easy to understand trading plan. You know, don't get bogged down in the details because then it gets to be too cumbersome and it's uh, it's too much work. So keep it simple, but at least be aware of profit and risk potential for trades. The same would be true on the loss side if you took big stops or anything. So I try and keep us as close to break even on exits as we can. We've got just around two minutes till today's opening bell. Sellers firmly in charge the last 10 minutes or so. We'll see if that downwards momentum continues in today's markets. Looks like KSS is getting too close to that long trigger, so. Let's push that up. We never enter anything pre-market. We only do in-market. So we want to see nice gap fill, right? Next stop, 38.50, right? Or kind of right now, it's uh, the midpoint is often resistance, just like the whole number is often support or resistance. So we expect it to slow down a little bit as it gets close to or near 38.50 in time and sales. It's just about a minute till today's opening bell, but it's always good to follow hot pre-market movers to see how to capitalize on those in market. So we'll see which way these go. See, just like I said it would, I told you it was going to slow down right right before 38.50, and within a nickel, I, I called the top, right? Boom. You know, the neat thing is the patterns repeat, and it's just like musical notes that repeat. You need to learn how to play, and once you learn how to play, then it just becomes a matter of practice and repetition and trade management and scaling and trading the right charts the right way. Anyway, our opening bell's coming up, folks. We've got just a few seconds. Welcome to Trading Open. Celebrating 17 years. Here we go in three, two, one, zero. Ding, 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 ding. It's go time. Keep an eye on this Weight Watchers pivot long at 45.8 in case it springs up to, to live here. UVXY is starting to test new highs today, right? 
16.4 is the long term, just uh, 23 cents above the current high. So we'll see if it's able to keep going up. 16.17, the immediate penny high. 16.4 is along. I'm going to start seeing which of these are starting to print green or strong red right out of the gate. VRX is starting to drop. 14.50, the short call. Keep an eye on that. Markets bouncing. Let's see if that's able to break north of 38.8. It hasn't broken over it yet. It's gotten close, but uh, no cigar hasn't gotten over 38.8. That's the trigger for KSS. Rather go sh strategically, a smarter play would be to go short on any failed attempt to keep going up. So 3830 is going to be my official short call in this guy. That's 20 cents under support. So if it drops, we go short under 3830. If it skyrockets on up, we go long over 3880. It's gotten just under, but not quite over 388. That's the resistance trigger on the long side. The short side plays to hit it short if it loss, loses a loss of 38.3. And again, what you do is now use a break even cover stop if you got a fill. Good call. Boom. May cover a little bit, put a cover stop at scratch on the remainder. To be continued, we'll see who else is. But what you don't do is you sit there and screw around and just watch one chart while six others are done without you. Been there, done that. And now nearly 20 years experience doing this, I can tell you, you got to play the field. Or like Saznav would say, you trade off and trade small. And that's correct. Or like I say, trade wide, not deep. We all get at the same thing. It's a number of recurrences that you want to take a shot at. Weight Watchers is trying to get back off its diet here. It's uh, climbing up to new highs. Long trigger is 4580. It's starting to come to life. It's like a pretty good chart. Secondary play would be up at 46.6. Take point. To be continued. Who else is running? Trip is trying to run. It's almost at my 31.7 long trigger, so keep an eye on Trip Advisor TRIP or 31.59 by 60 on the inside. Climbs north of 31.7. That's our go time for a long alert. And I would put in a an aggressive, more aggressive short at say 31.40 in case it stalls right here and drops. That would be again experienced traders only. So the bracket would be a short at 31.40, a long, which would be the preferred play over 31.7. We'll come back to it and see where it hits. In the first 10 minutes is very hectic in the markets because you need to put a lot of stuff under surveillance quickly. You don't have the luxury of time to screw around and look at one chart at a time. You know, that's an amateur's approach. Professionals are always, you know, scanning the markets and see what's hot and how to capitalize on it. So you do as a day trader. Having thumbnail charts can facilitate that, so you can keep an eye on more than one chart at a time, more than a bunch as I click through them kind of thing. So that's why it's a smart idea to have thumbnail charts, you know, like these available for whatever you're following. So to the corner of your eye, you can follow up with things in real time as they're starting to make their move before they run up without you. Strategically, be a lot more worried about trading too much size on choppy, uncertain charts than missing out on the big one because there's plenty of opportunities in the morning in the markets. The key to doing this successfully is really tight risk management and play a number of instruments. Number of stocks. Hmm. I just want to hunt around at the top and bottom of the quote box. That's feeding ground for day traders, right? Twilio looks like a two-day low breakdown. 
may be good for bounce too, right? It's ran so sharply to the downside, it may be time for shorts to cover for a squeeze. For now, we'll put it way up at 27.10, though I'd rather play it tighter. I don't enter at 90 cents or whole numbers. But if I did, right over 27 would be the visual correct place for a first bounce attempt. It's likely to keep dropping, so we'll see if it does so. Bottoms falling out. And what you shouldn't do as a trader, what you should not do as a trader is look at it as a, it's a buying opportunity. It's on sale. No, it's more like it's a selling opportunity. Everyone's dumping it. Maybe it drops to 22. So even though it looks like a good deal here, it doesn't look like quite a good deal when it's down multiple points down from here, right? So learn that the hard way. Let's tighten that bounce up. Let's do 26.30. Twenty-five seven hit. Use a break-even cover stop. Cover a little now for a quick scalp. Use a break-even cover stop on the remainder. We'll come back to it in a minute. I just don't want to miss out on other charts as they're running. That's so why I do a very good comprehensive job, though it may be you know a little challenging to follow at first if you're new to experienced day trading. It's you know pros know right. This is how you do it even faster if you're an experienced trader. You just have you have an S and P chart, a thumbnail chart, and all tapes, all time and sale multiple windows like this. That's what professional traders do. They have lots of tapes all over, and they use smaller font, and they may have a, two dozen tapes, and then their order routing window, and that's all they trade off of is the tape. But that's very tough to teach because it's just numbers. And so visually showing the chart patterns makes a lot more sense, like my winning call in this guy. Sell half now. Use a break-even stop on the remainder. It's starting to move, but not real strong yet. So Play it tight is right. If it gets back to scratch, go to cash. We'll paint it gray for now to indicate. At least a break even. Trip advisor trying to climb. Trying to get over 31.7. Hasn't climbed over it yet, but it's poised. It's knocking on the door. Let me in. 31.7. I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. Let's see if it breaks 31.7. Again, it's an inside range chart, so not nearly as good as a two-day high. Weight Watchers is trying to climb. Number 45.8s. Our trigger, if it gets over that, hasn't quite got over that yet. It Came right up to, but didn't break over it. It looks like it may take it out this time. So keep an eye on Weight Watchers for a potential pivot long if it breaks over 45.8. That alert, again, for those of you who are new, welcome aboard. The long triggers are all in green. We wait until it gets above any of those to go long. The short triggers are all in red. We wait until price action gets below any of those to go short. And buy a nickel, a penny, or whatever, but that's the right triggers to use. Work out most of the time. All right, KSS is now a nice in the money call. Up a full point for you. Booyah. You're welcome. I would sell it all now, just on general principle. If I'm a point up in the money on a bounce, I'm going to take that money. And I don't care if it runs to 49 without me. I would take my money and run. The mantra of a professional day trader, sweet profits early and often. I got you guys in at 38.8. Good, no BS, honest, professional call out at 39.8. Do the math. If you traded $1,000, then put space for a $1 winner, but it'd be $1,000 up in the money. And I'd cash right now to the bank and I'd be done with it because I think it's going to drop. So now is a good time to sell, sell, sell. That is a sell. Got you guys in on the breakout out up here. That's a good professional call. I called it when it was a 39.8. Now it's given back quite a bit already. Be sure to close out the trade, lock in a profit, and we are done. No more trading this guy long today. That was it for longs. Now let's see if there's a good short side reversal. Welcome. I would actually use that same trigger now on the short side, 
So if it drops under 38.8, we go short. I'm a big fan of action movies and TV shows like uh, Legends of Tomorrow or The Flash or or the uh, things that are fast. Or I, I watch a ton of martial arts videos, and I was watching another good one from China, subtitled last night on Netflix. Anyway, look at your trading like, you know, you have to be a kung fu master. You have to get on top of these charts the right way. I give you everything on a freaking silver platter. I'm just pissed off I'm not trading these in my own account live. I'm, but hopefully the teaching grasshopper is good because Weight Watchers nailed it, baby. 45.8, that's up 50 cents. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. We're in the money again. Oh, just so damn good. Anyway, sell it all now if you're a new trader. I got you guys in at 45.8. Do you see why now would be a smart time to sell it? Because it's not going up. And it's ran up over the whole number. ran up to the 50 cent resistance area, which is another exit target. So sell all now, lock in a profit. Right? When I said to do so, it was up even a bit further. But it's a good 40, 50 cent win. It had run for you from the entry. Now it's a good time to cash it out. Next long is 46.6, elegantly set a dime above what turned out to be the exact freaking top. And that's not by any, you know, luck or anything. It's all skill. Like I, and I document my strategies all over the world for you guys because I want you guys to get this. Where, where's that exit list? So remember, if you had a whole or a half 50 cent increment support or resistance level, that's a reason to lock in a gain, take your profit, and exit stage left, right? So if you make it all the way up to the 50 cent mark, at least take some off the top. If you're a new trader, just sell it all into the halves and the whole numbers, especially the whole numbers. You can always re-engage with this guy if it gets over 46.6. We can lock and load, but we're in a 45.8. I got you guys out at the 40 before the drop, and now it's starting to drop. Uh, again, now would be a smart time to exit with profit before the market takes it back all the way to the entry. If it keeps running on up, which it might, you know, it's got lots of range, 46.60 would be our secondary law. And in a lot of live rooms, they'd all be cheering and shouting and having their shills say, I just made thousands of dollars and blah, 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 blah. We don't do that. I like to be very straightforward and disciplined and focused and professional for you guys. But anyway, you're welcome. That was a world-class call on the entry and the exit 50 cent entry to call for you guys live in real time, getting out at the exact freaking top like I did in the Coles, right at the exact freaking top, right? So anyway, that's how you do it. And those two trades would have been fine for the morning. I'd likely be skeptical about doing much else today. I got paid, or at least paper trading paid. Uh, I've been trading it live. I would have gotten paid. Uh, and you take your money and walk, right? You don't screw around and say, well, I missed the ones that ran up the most. What do I do? I don't know. Learn how to trade. Roku, 25.6. Any questions? Three for three, baby. Boom. Another epic win. How much money? And it's sell it all now. Don't screw around. As a professional trader, I tell you, I would sell this. I'd take my point and a half and be freaking thrilled. If you guys got my 25.6 long call, how much money would you have made on that guy? Let's zoom in. That would have activated right here. It ran all the way up here over a point in a matter of eight minutes. Five to eight minutes is the sweet spot for good big range moving day trades. But I'd sell it all to the buyers while they're getting still good. Maybe it runs to 30 without us. That's okay. Get off the bus, take your point and a half or two, and be thrilled, right? We're up nearly two points for my call. I called the exit right over 27. So I'd be missing out on this last leg of the run up, but that's okay. It's all about protecting open profits. Your goal as a, a trader, whether you're professional or you're you know, just a retail trader trying to figure this out, or if you're one of my institutional guys, you know that banking profits over and over again is your goal as a trader. So don't worry about missing the bottom or the top. You get that often cliched phrase, the, the meat in the middle or the piece in the middle, and that's fine. You miss the bottom third, you miss the top third, you get the big one point winner. And that was, I told you that was my, this one and UVXY were my two favorite gappers. I remember I told you that, right? This one's still doing nothing, but that's okay. Roku ran up for us. Now's a good time to bank profit. Anybody 
have any questions as to the validity or the success rate of my alerts or the reasons why I said to go along here. For example, the reason why, and I explained not only so many winning alerts for my traders here at tradingtheopen.com with good, great calls that work out most of the time, but I explained the pattern. This is a, a nice gap up with the bullish cut pattern. This one was an over 10% gap, but it still ran nicely, which is why you're always prepared because often you'll get surprisingly strong charts and you want to capitalize on that. So I got you guys right near the 27. It, keep, it kept running up a point and a half, which is even better. So, you know, if you stayed the course and stayed in, congratulations. You're up over two points for my call, right? I got you in at 20, now three points. I got you in at 25.6. It's up to just under 29. Now I'd be looking, or 25.6 now, yeah, 29. Now I'd be looking for the rollover short. Even as everyone else is buying, the smart trader knows to get out of Dodge while getting's good. 28, 30, 27, 50. Risky, though. Admittedly risky because we nailed the breakout long call for you guys right there. Compare that performance with anybody else in the entire world that runs a live trading room. I doubt anybody got a multi-point call out of this guy like you, like I did, right? Boom. I've been doing this nearly 20 years. That's why I'm good. It took me so long to figure this, this stuff out. Anyway, gap continuations are bread and butter here at Trading Open. You can see hit and ran nicely. I think it's likely to stall and drop any second now. Stick a fork in it. Up your still in. I'd absolutely positively be getting out of this guy. Even if it runs up to 30 without us, I'd be booking profit into the buyers, right? I got you guys in at 2560 right here was my long call. Think how much money you could have made had you taken that 2560 in and sell anywhere. I told you guys to get out right here. Kept going up without us for a few minutes, and that's okay. You can't second guess yourself as a day trader and you don't chase, you just manage risk correctly and professionally manage risk strategically so you get your entries and exits done the right way does everybody see why it's slow it's starting to slow down now let's do a quick tape reading walkthrough what i'm looking for to show a sign of potential exhaustion in the trade is flatter candles or red candles or bearish upper shadows and or a slowdown in price action and so is 29 whole number going to be it or does it break on through to the other side and keep running on up it may keep it can make it going up it's a very strong chart and there we go slightly over 29 but i'd be a bear if it gets under 20 say the 28.9 and continues on down because i think it's due for a pullback at least or a slowdown and if it keeps running you know it sounds like somebody can't wait to get their hands on Roku. Somebody knows, which is why it's ran up so far. Somebody's betting big and large on this guy, which is what's propping the price up. And it keeps running like a son of a gun. But a good professional day trader will always know where the money's at. You like a bloodhound. You always sniff out the money flow. I got you guys long here. I called it way back when it was down here. I said we go long if it gets over 2560. Any questions? I think it's going to roll over. See, it dropped under that 2890 in the tape. We're starting to see some sizes, not significantly. This is bid times ask. We want to see large numbers on the right and block go off at the bid. We'll see if that occurs. But now, absolutely positively, I would 110% be out of any open long right here and be a seller of this instrument to bank a huge epic profit. Be finished with it. I guess you guys in at 2560. It ran up three points from the call. And that's what we do here at Trading Open is get you guys in on these great charts that actually have trade momentum and potential, not these crappy under $10 low float, $3 stocks that run 15 cents or so that you'd have to pay thousands of shares. You could have paid just 100 shares and be up 300 bucks for my call, right? So do the math. If you're up 1,000 shares, it'd be up $3,000 in the trade, three grand, three large, and a single three-point epic win. And that's the kind of chart a professional day trader likes. Look at all these numbers on the right. See the large, let me scroll back here. See, this is bid times ask. When you start to see large numbers like this, it means they're trying to push price down. 
Doesn't mean necessarily it's going to drop, but it's an early warning indicator when your bid times ask order flow shows predominantly large blocks on the right side. This is your longs times shorts, basically, or bids times ask. So you look for the pattern of the tape to see what price action and volume is doing, and then what the supporting sizes is showing you in terms of the order flow and the mechanics of the trade. And that's how you use tape reading along with the one-minute candlesticks to manage your entries and exits. That lesson I learned to, today is well worth the whole month's price of admission. And I used to charge and get, you know, 300 bucks for three mornings with me. So you guys are so freaking lucky. I dropped my pricing so much in the live room. But anyway, welcome to professional trading. I told you that'd be a rollover, right? At Coles. And I put the short trigger at 3880 and then sure enough, did start to drop. Use a break even cover stop though. If this guy bounces back to the 80, we go cash at scratch, right? I'm a big fan of break even exit. So it's in the money by a little bit, not enough really to take profit. So if it gets, and there we go, we go cash it for a scratch because it's starting to bounce. I would still reshort it though in a drop because it's a, it's a shorter's chart. Let's do 38.40. Next attempt would be a short if it gets under 38.4. It's often like threading the eye of the needle. You know, good advanced day trading is always about looking at the strongest patterns as they're in motion. Twilio 2630 worked out. Sell half, put a stop at break even on the rest. New traders sell it all now. Bank a profit because it's up 20, 30 cents. Take the money and run because it's kind of a sketchy chart. FPRX. 29.4, if you took that short, congratulations. That's also in the money. Like a boss, baby. Boom. Cover out the short. I'd cut it all out now, just on GP, just on general principle, because it's starting to bounce. I called the short here. I'd be covering it here. Ran down almost a point for you, but if you're still in, I'd cover the short now. You can short down at new lows, let's say 28.30 on the short to hit the bid on that, 28.30 on the short side. But these types of charts and this kind of thought process that I'm walking you through successfully today with great effect is very much what you want to start making the cornerstone of your trading approach. So you can understand exactly not how, not only how so many winning calls were made today, right? 28.30, if you took that short, which I said to go short if it hit that, right? That's 40 cents, 50 cents, 60 cents in the money. If you're a new trader, cover it all out now. You know the routine. For 50 cents in the money, take the money and run. I said to go short if it lost 28.30. I told, I called the exact freaking top. Did I not at the 29? And then I said to go short. For icing on the cake, that's a rollover play. 28.30 was my short call. I'd cover it now because you're 50, 60 cents in the money. Take the money and run. My favorite phrase is a day trader. Next short is if it gets under and holds under the 27.50, which it's trying to do right now. So we'll see if it continues the madness on down to new lows. But I guess you guys in for multi-point run on the upside and a winner on the short on the downside. That is professional trading. Compare that to anybody in the world that runs a live room. Nobody touches this. I'm the original. And I, mean, I celebrate it. I want to inspire you guys. I want you to get motivated that it can be done once you have a lot of years of experience by trading the right charts with correct precision timing skills. That's really important. Let's see, this guy, okay, I pulled this one up pre-market because I like the previous day's range, and I like it today, too. Let's do 63.50 for those of you who are swing traders. You may want to swing K, the ticker. Kellogg. Tony the Tiger says it's great. Well, we'll see if it takes out 63.50. I stopped eating cereal when I was, like, eight, but eh, I still remember it exists. I just have a... A bagel and black coffee, that's my breakfast. Anyway, 63 and a half, that's going to be our long trigger. Valley and Farmer is trying to come to life. 15, 10, we're almost at the long. It's just a few pennies under the long trigger. Not a particularly exciting, appealing chart. It's kind of climbing its way out of the, kind of like the movie The Mummy. And the mummy comes to life and it's trying to claw its way out of the tomb and all that kind of stuff. It's... It's much less an exciting chart than if it were at a two-day high, but it's momentum play 1510. Better play would be way up at 1540 if institutional buying volume really 
floods into this guy and takes it out. I just know Valley, and I know it, when it gets hot, when it gets heat, it tends to run sharp like it did yesterday. So we'll see if it gets more of same today to be continued. Volume's too thin. Already got the long call for you guys in that. Next song is 4660, if it's able to break over and hold over that. Too thin and sketchy. Yeah. A lot of momentum plays today, which is good. We're getting close to 10. Under Armour's putting its clothing back on as it's climbing up to new highs, but not enough volatility to be of interest. So it's a nice pattern. It'd be nicer if it had like three points of range, not 50 or 60 cents. So we'll pass on that. Again, K at 63.50 for a swing long. And so it's very smart to do a rapid fire type approach like what I illustrate here, because that way you can capitalize on the strong two or three or four charts as they run and not miss out on significant price action moves in the strongest charts, right? That's your goal as a trader is to give yourself as many chances to get it right with as many great charts like this one as possible. I'd cover all open short now in this guy because it looks like it's trying to bounce. So cover all open short. Lock and profits on both of these guys. I would still take additional attempts at the short because it's got lots of points of range, right? That's what you'll find here at Trading Open. The key to my success as a trader and the key to my success in reaching so many thousands of traders who valued the training over the years is the leading authority on intraday stock breakouts and gaps and the rest of it is Picking, giving yourself a fighting chance by trading the charts with the biggest point ranges that have the best patterns that we know to work out most of the time, like our gap continuations with charts with high volume and high volatility and clean, well-defined charts that are not choppy or uncertain. Something I was thinking about earlier this morning is kind of a lesson learned is where we struggle as traders is the gray area, right? You're kind of in a, you know, like in... London, I was watching Legends of Tomorrow, a good TV series uh, last night, and they're in the Jack the Ripper, late 1800s London, and you see all this fog everywhere. And as a trader, it's really, the markets will be like Jack the Ripper to your trading account if you trade in the fog of uncertainty. And being uncertain about your entries uh, is the biggest thing that causes people to lose money because they don't know what they're doing. And they trade, kind of like playing a musical instrument and not knowing how to hold it correctly, you're gonna just make a lot of noise and not a lot of music. If you wanna make music with your trading, you need to you know, have correct posture and embouchure, or finger position, and, and know the notes and music and rhythm. And just like medieval London, you don't wanna be in the fog, you wanna go where it's safe and bright and well protected. And as a trader, your protection is your knowledge and your skill and timing pattern recognition capabilities that you work tirelessly at year after year to get better at, right? It's a big puzzle. <coughs> Excuse me. The world's biggest financial puzzle is here with untold riches and untold poverty on either side of it. So it's kind of like being Indiana Jones and walking across the, uh, you know, that kind of like a, a chasm or walking across a tightrope bridge with a long way down on either side. There's treasure on the other side, but a lot of pitfalls in the way there as well. So I told you this guy was a short, right? Boom. Anyway, so as a trader, you want to get rid of the uncertainty, the fog of not having clear charts, and instead focus on charts like this Roku chart, which I could trade all day long because it's a rock star chart, right? There's a lot of potential money to be made or lost in this kind of a chart, right? It's a reasonably nice price action the spread's not too onerous up to nickel or so but with that much points of range to work with from 24 to 29 a five point range a nickel spread's fine so 
it's a good chart. We called the, the right calls for you guys three out of three times, which is nice. We'll see if it continues on down under 26.7 for a next short. Let's see a question about VRX. VRX is uh, the long triggers at fifteen uh, ten, so it's a valid call and going up. You may want to use a break even stop though. If you got in, you may want to use a break even stop, even though it's only a few pennies in the money. A break even stop at the ten and then rebuy if it gets over the forty. But it's a good call, so thanks. Yeah. But whenever possible, yeah. Like if you have a question about something like this. When in doubt, use break-even stops, right? So even if it only goes up a few pennies, it gets back to the 10, you may want to go to cash. So it's the first attempt. You may take a couple of shots at it. And again, this is an inside chart. So anything that's an inside chart, you should not be asking about unless you've been here at least six months. Leave it because they're the lowest odds. I mean, it's still a winning chart so far, which is great because I called it. But it may go right back down again. So if you've got less than six months, uh, do not do any of the inside charts because they are less good odds charts than two-day now charts like this multi-point Roku was, okay? If you're a new trader, mainly focus on the gaps, secondarily focus on the breakouts. By new, I mean, you know, less than six months or here, here, uh, and completely do not do any inside range trading. Also, only use inside charts if you've got say which isn't much but five years experience is another good rule of thumb and you may well but i'm just saying in general anything that's a counter trend entries or riskier entries or lower odds charts you want to I'm not going to, anyway, if you have more than five years experience only and at least six months in the room then and only then take the inside charts. Everyone else is focused on gaps because those are the strong, strong ones. Anyway, great, great chart so far. Let's go top down through our charts and see where we're at at trading open. TWLO, I'd said go long at 26.30 and we closed it out earlier for a win. That worked out good for a bounce play. Weight Watchers also a good pivot long play. 45.8. 46.6 is now in the money for you. But again, sell a little bit now, like half the shares now. Trail the stop at break even on the rest. So if it gets back to the 60s, scalp out with a quick profit and exit stage left. The good trades are usually right from the start. Like this one is, and it's a winning call. Like the earlier one at 45.8 was another winner for you guys. Or two in a row, but these are inside range charts. Another really good chart today for us was KSS. We're in at 38.8. As you guys get right under the 40, whole number, you can see that on a dime it's pivoted right at the 40, which is a typical pattern. And I also then called the short for you guys at 38.8, which continued on down and again at 38.4, which is also now in the money. Cover out at least half of it now. Put a cover stop at break even on the rest. We'll paint those guys green because they're green. 38.8 for the first short, 38.40 for the secondary short. Both good in the money calls. Go ahead and cover out at least half. If you're a new trader, cover it all out now because why? We're right near a whole number. And for two winning shorts in a row, you cover it out if it starts to bounce off a whole number. So cover it out, take the money and run. You can always reshort down at new lows. And that would be a smart time to cover any open short. Roku is our biggest standout chart. I got you guys long here at trading open at 2560. A call made when it was well back here. It gave you plenty of time to set up the order flow for that. I had to sit out right near 27. So we didn't get the entire length of the run. We got the middle third, which is perfect for over a one point winning call for you guys. It ran up three points total, which is great. Uh, and then we called two sequential winning shorts for you. The first one at 2830. The second one at 27.5. And again, cover it all out now is fine if you wish. Next shorts are if it gets under 26.7 and 
Macy's ran up 20 cents. We'll call that one a stop because it didn't hold its own. Even though we have our 20 cent rule to protect us most of the time, it's kind of a shaky chart. So we'll put that one in the red column. So we should have one that I would call a stop. Even though it did run up a dime the first time and 20 cents the second time, it didn't really take off. So kind of choppy, which is what I warned you about this being a choppy earlier chart. Sure enough, led to choppy price action today. UVXY, the long call 1640 never hit. The short call of 157 just did. I would use a break even cover stop, though, if it gets back to the 70, go to cash. Just like RX started to poke its head over the 10. As you guys go back to cash when it came back to the 10 for another break even entry and exit, which is why we use them, right? Look at your break even entries and exits as a tool to keep you out of stops. You know, and again, this is all for paper trading. If you're Real money trading, you'd have the commission to deal with, which is still a tiny expense compared to a big stop. Much better to take a break-even trade and all it cost you was a commission and out than a big, you know, 50 or 80 cent or dollar stop. So when in doubt, get out, play it tight is right. FPRX, the short call from the 2940 worked out earlier for you. And TripAdvisor 31.7. Use a break-even stop on this guy. The 31.40 did hit and do a 20 cent run, so we'll give, give ourselves credit for at least good for the 20 cent play. And same thing with this. So you can see our scratch calls are mostly in the inside charts, which is why those are best left avoided. Unless you got a lot of experience and or you just want extra charts to look at. The best chart performance was at Gappers, particularly Roku, our standout stock of the day. And that's our primary session for tradingtheopen.com. So, audit my performance. We had two, four, six, eight, nine, ten wins, three scratches, and one stop, which is spectacular. That's well over 70% win rate. And those are the type of alerts that you continue to learn from here with me at tradingtheopen.com.